Now throughout the course, we're gonna be using a number of penetration testing tools. You can go ahead and install each of these tools manually, or you can do what most pen testers do, including myself, and save time and effort and use an operating system designed for hacking. We're gonna be using an operating system called Kali Linux, and it's just a flavor of Linux based on Debian, and it comes in with all the programs and the applications that we need to use pre-installed and pre-configured. This means that we can just install this operating system and then start learning or hacking. There are two options to install Kali. You can install it as a virtual machine inside your current operating system, or you can install it as a main machine, as a main operating system. Throughout the course, I'm actually gonna be using it as a virtual machine because using it as a virtual machine works exactly the same as installing it as a main machine because it'll be completely isolated from your computer because it's only gonna run inside VirtualBox. So if you break it or if you mess things up, it's very, very easy to fix. It's very easy to go back to other snapshots, other configurations, and also you won't lose any functionality by using it as a virtual machine. That's why I always use it as a virtual machine. And in this lecture, I'm gonna cover how to install it as a virtual machine inside VirtualBox. Now I'm gonna be doing the steps on a Mac OS X computer, but these steps are exactly the same regardless of what operating system you use. So if you're on Windows or on Linux, you just have to download the VirtualBox version of your computer. And then the steps shown in this lecture are exactly the same after installing VirtualBox. So I'm gonna include the download link in the resources of this lecture. And I have it already opened in here. All you have to do is just scroll down. Make sure you click on the Kali Linux virtual box images, not on the VMware. And then download the version of Kali that's compatible with your system. So if you have a 64 bit computer, download the 64 bits. If, the, if you have the 32 bits, download the 32 bits. Now one click on this will start the download for you. If you're using Internet Explorer or Edge browser, then you're gonna have to right click and save target as. On Chrome and Firefox, you can just click the link. Now this is downloading for me and I'm gonna stop it because I've already downloaded it. So I already have it downloaded in here. And as you can see, you should get a file with a .ova extension. So you have the name followed by .ova in here. So to install this in VirtualBox, all you have to do is literally just double click the file. And as you can see, I get a window which will allow me to import this virtual machine. Now I'm gonna keep everything the same for now and I'm just gonna click on import. Now that's it, the virtual machine is ready to be used. Now before I start it, I wanna show you how to modify some of its settings. So we're gonna click on it. Then we're gonna click on the settings in here. And the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to system. And I'm gonna modify the amount of RAM it has. Now depending on how much total RAM you have on your computer, you can leave this at two if you want, but one gigabyte is enough for Kali. I usually leave it at two because I have 16 gigs of RAM, but if you have less, one gigabyte is enough for it. Also, if you come here on the processors, you'll see that by default, I have two processors assigned to it. Again, I have eight CPUs, so two is not gonna cause too much pressure on my computer. If you have less, one CPU is enough for Kali. Now, we're gonna go to the network settings and we're gonna set this to use a NAT network. Now, sometimes when you set this to a NAT network, you won't see a network name in here. If you don't, please check out my link in the resources and it'll show you how to create a NAT network. For me, it already has a NAT network, so I'm gonna keep it on this one. And what this setting basically does is it's gonna create a virtual network where my host machine, which is my Mac OS X computer in here, is gonna be the router for this network, and then all the virtual machines are gonna be clients connected to this network. So they're gonna get internet connection from my host machine, and at the same time, all of my virtual machines will be connected to a virtual network. 
This is very handy because my virtual machines will be able to communicate with each other. We can use one of them to hack into the other. We can use it to test networks attacks and much more. So it'll first allow my virtual machines to have internet connection. It'll also allow them to communicate with each other and it'll do all of this through a virtual network. It will not use any of your wireless adapters or any of your wireless cards. It'll create a virtual ethernet network. So as far as the virtual machine is concerned, they're gonna think that they're connected to a, to a network through a wire. So that's it, I'm done with my settings right now and I'm gonna click on OK. And we can start our virtual machine. Now to start it, all we have to do is just click on the start button in here. Now I'm gonna click inside the virtual machine and hit enter. And we are inside the virtual machine. Now it's asking us for the username and the default username is root, so R-O-O-T. And then it's asking us for the password, and the default password is the reverse of that, which is T-O-O-R. And that's it, now I'm inside my virtual machine. Now since we installed this using the ready image, we can just click on this, on the green button here, or we can go to view, full screen, and we'll be able to go in full screen and the screen will resize automatically to the size of our screen. Now note in here, you should actually see a network icon because we set this machine to use a NAT network. Since we don't have a network icon, this means that this machine didn't get connected to the NAT network. So if I open my browser in here, you'll see that it's not connected to the internet. To fix this issue, we're just going to go all the way to the top. This is going to display our menus. We're going to go to Devices, Network, and we're going to click on Connect Network Adapter. You only have to do this once, and then the virtual machine will automatically connect to the NAT network. Now once you do this, if you give it a few seconds, you see that I have a network icon appearing in here. And if I click it, you'll see it looks like I'm connected to a wired network. As you can see in here, it says wired connected. So Kali thinks it's connected to a wired network. Now if I just click try again in my browser, you'll see that I have internet access. So that's it. That shows how to install Kali Linux as a virtual machine. Don't be intimidated by this new operating system. We're gonna go through the basics and we're gonna use it a lot. And it's actually gonna become very easy for you to use. Also, like I said, you won't lose any functionality when you install Kali Linux as a virtual machine. It's actually better to install it as a virtual machine because it's completely isolated from your computer and it'll be very easy to fix if things go wrong. Keep in mind, installing this on different hardware and different computers might show you some errors and some issues. So please, if you have any errors, just add them in the discussions and I'll help you resolve them.